In this video, we will try to grow the Kaala bell pepper plant from seed to first harvest and back to seed. Keep in mind that this is not a how-to video, but sharing the process of the first time trying to grow a Kaala bell pepper plant. We're going to plant the Kaala bell pepper seeds in a small pot. The seeds were purchased from the University of Hawaii Seed Lab. I wanted to try to grow pepper plants with different varieties such as this Kaala bell pepper. Like other peppers I'm interested in growing, these Kaala bell peppers seem like they are low maintenance and less likely to get eaten from animals in the yard. Since this pot is deeper than a shallow tray, I chose to add some soil around the yard to mix it with the potting soil. Here's a little background about the Kaala bell pepper plant. The Kaala bell pepper is a member of the species Capsicum annuum. Capsicum annuum is a pepper species that is native to the southern parts of North America down to the northern parts of South America. That being said, the Kaala bell pepper is a cross of several peppers from the researchers at the University of Hawaii. The average fruit or Kaala pepper are about 8.2 centimeters long and 6.6 .6 centimeters wide. Their average weight is about 102 grams. So this means that the Kaala bell pepper is about one-third of a normal bell pepper size. Because of their size, they can also be described as a mini bell pepper. The Kaala bell pepper is a sweet pepper. The Kaala is resistant to bacterial wilt. It is also tolerant to root knot nematodes. The Kaala bell peppers can change to a red color when mature. These peppers are known to mature in about 75 days. As a side note related to the name, there are several ways to pronounce each vowel in Polynesian languages such as Hawaiian. Hawaiian language was historically a verbal and not a written language. The sounds unique to each vowel can be written with the addition of special characters. These include an okina to represent a glottostop or a macron to represent a longer vowel sound. One example of several alternatives to write and pronounce ka'ala would be ka'ala. I have chosen Kaala because none of the documentation for the name of the pepper by the University of Hawaii has included special characters. Back to the process of planting the seeds. At this time, I mixed the soil and water by hand. I added the seeds to the top of the muddy soil. I poked the seeds into the soil. I also added dry soil on the top of the seeds. Again, please keep in mind that this is not the proper process to propagate the seeds. The proper process would include planting each seed 0.25 inches or 0.635 centimeters deep in a container with separated trays. I chose to plant them in this small container just to help save time. I finished off with adding water to the top of the soil. For these peppers, it took about 10 days for the seeds to germinate. After these first sprouts could be seen, more sprouted over the next few days. Most of the sprouts look similar to small pepper plants like the small ones in this view. The taller sprout, which was a little bit different, was likely a seed planted earlier in this potting soil. Although it was too early, I wanted to get them planted in the ground. Looking back for next time, I'll try to wait until the sprouts are about double the height as seen in this video. To cut some of the grass and dig the soil, I used the hori hori trowel. The hori hori is a hand tool that looks like a design that's in between a knife and a common gardening trowel. Once the soil was ready, I dug the sprouts up from the pot and planted them directly into the ground. I repeated this process for the remainder of the Kaala bell pepper sprouts. These pepper plants were one of several varieties that I was growing from seed and planting around the same time. Most of the peppers I planted that were other varieties did not last long. This is likely because of animals in the yard. When the grass and soil are cut up or dug up, it attracts a lot of animals in the yard, such as birds. The birds then dig around the area that's planted. If the digging doesn't get the sprouts, the same animals will just eat the leaves and rip the stems off the plants. The same thing happens if I put fresh mulch or compost around a small plant. And because these were planted at the same time as several other varieties, the Kaala bell peppers were left alone most of the time. Unlike some of the other peppers, however, I did consistently water the Kaala bell pepper plants. Unfortunately, because the other bell pepper plants were not doing so well, I did not expect much from the Kaala bell pepper plants. Another thing to note is that the growth for these plants is very slow from day to day. 
So along with the damage done by animals and slow growth, I did not record their growth between planting and harvest. Specifically for the Ka'alas, I did plant about a dozen sprouts and less than half of the plants grew to fruit by the time of this video. The maintenance routine for these plants included using hand shears to cut the grass around them. The hand shears allowed me to keep an area of grass and weeds to be cut down. This area extended about a foot or 30.48 centimeters from the stem of the plants. Hand shears is a bit of a manual process, especially when you multiply it for many plants. I chose this manual process because unfortunately I can't blame everything on the animals as I did lose a couple of plants from the string trimmer or lawnmower. Cutting around the plant with hand shears also helps with visibility when cutting with power tools and machinery. Just allowing grass and reeds to grow at all competes for nutrients in the soil. This is the compromise I'm willing to accept given the larger situation. I'm planting these plants without a fixed irrigation system and I do not want the bare soil to be exposed to the sun. Although it competes for nutrients, sometimes the grass can help shade the soil underneath. Once again, I did water these pepper plants consistently. This really helped because immediately after planting them until the harvest, it was very sunny weather. Now to the harvest. After a few months, I saw the Ka'ala bell pepper plants with bell peppers on them. Again, although it may have been a little bit too early, I wanted to harvest the pepper and share it with you. If the pepper was left on the plant, it will eventually turn red in color. The length of this pepper is 75.37 millimeters or 2.96 inches. The width of this pepper is 54.83 millimeters or 2.15 inches. This pepper was not small enough for me to pinch and pull easily. So rather than pinch and pull, I cut the pepper off with a knife to reduce damage to the plant. This bell pepper was left out at room temperature for a few days. I wanted to use it to extract the seeds. I measured the pepper again after three days. The length of this pepper is 74.05 millimeters or 2.91 inches. The width of this pepper is 51.29 millimeters or 2.01 inches. Here's a view of the Ka'ala bell pepper cut in half with the seeds attached. The Ka'ala bell pepper is a mild pepper. Caution and safety equipment may be needed for hot peppers. Using the knife, the seeds were separated from the pepper. As a side note, the heat from a pepper is from capsaicin. Although many say that the seeds are the hottest part of the pepper, it's also documented that the heat comes from the capsaicin glands which are associated with the placenta. Since all three of these are close together inside the pepper, it is likely that when handled or cut, the capsaicin may be on or around the entire inside of the pepper. As seen, one bell pepper was able to provide about the same number of seeds that we started out with. Although only a few plants is not a good yield from a pack of many seeds, these seeds will be used to again try to grow more Ka'ala bell peppers. It is great to be able to share this first time process with you all. That'll wrap it up for now and I want to thank you again for watching this video.